come out further. And then it falls right back now, into itself. Yeah, it rolls back into itself. The way the water comes out, it hits, and then when the water falls, it creates friction. And that friction causes this water on the surface here to suck back in. Then this water goes under it, it comes up, and then it gets caught up the water. Part of the water that gets sucked back in, and then you just recycle and recycle and recycle. And with the, with the, in white water, you have these kind of features. And they're always the most dangerous species. Um, but what typically white water doesn't have is like solid vertical walls on both sides that make it impossible to swim out. There's no break in it. So once that's roaring, there's no way to swim out of it. You just can't break that current. The only way you get out is you just get up and get stuck down in the right spot and it pulls you out, which happens fairly often, actually, but sometimes not fast enough. Um, so right now, with the boil there, we know that it's not super mean. Anyway, so who was here yesterday? A couple of you, all right. So this is the part I like to call, this is your dam. There are many like it, but this one is yours, all right. So talking about the structure of the dam just a little bit. You have the top pool, right? I mean, it's somewhere around, what, 20 feet or something like that above the bottom pool. In between that, we have a dam. At the top, we have the crown or the lip, all right. And then behind the white, behind the water, you have the face of the dam. That's the concrete part, all right? And it could be vertical, it could be uh, whatever. And the water actually coming over the lip is the curtain, all right? In this case, your all's dam, your curtain is attached to the face. That's not always the case. Um, and we kind of have the most, uh, the most issues with those curtains that separate from the face because uh, it allows our boat to get back in behind the curtain a little bit and it grabs a little harder. Uh, this dam also, um, one, of the, one of the ways we get out of, out of the dam is to punch through that curtain and bounce the boat, get the recoil. So if, if there's a victim in the dam, we'll actually drive into the face, have somebody ready to snag and let that recoil of the boat push the back of the boat out shifting into reverse and backing right out. Uh, so, but back to the structure and the, and the parts of it. So the water falls over the lip, comes down the face as a curtain, and then it hits, keeps going under the surface of the water, and it hits the bottom and it runs up, and that's called a boil line. Today the boil line is out a little bit further from the face than yesterday. We have a little bit more water. The other indication is the bubbles that are extending down a little further, right? So we talked about the green fingers yesterday. Uh, the green fingers, if you look, is the color of the bottom pool that extends back pointing toward the face. All right? I like to use the white water at the, at the bottom of the dam when it looks like this as a mud analogy. Everybody's driven a truck through mud, snow, whatever. Uh, so we talk about aeration and the motor. So the aeration is kind of the mud, the snow that makes your tires spin. You'll hear that motor wind up and it really just isn't going anywhere. So before you go into a dam and this thing is starting to get a little meaner and stuff, you're looking for those green fingers or they may be brown if the water's muddier or whatever. All right, that's your good traction areas. So you may look at it and say, all right, I've got one over here on this side that extends all the way into the face. I've got one in the middle that goes almost to the face. Further across, there's another one almost to the face. That's where I want to try and get my motor to and get it in reverse or get pointed that way when I want to gun it and get out of the dam, right? And so be aware of those type of things. As that boil line, as the water coming over the lip increases, all right, that boil line will move farther away from the dam. You guys are local, you've seen it like that. Uh, you may have even seen it big enough where there's three or four feet of water coming over the top of that and it kind of starts to maybe even wave and build out and crash. All right, you see it'll almost ocean wave, pipeline and build and stuff. Um, so be aware of what you're going, in, what you're going into. The other thing, Darren was just talking about the concrete walls, all right? So when we drive into these dams with the motor rigs and they're pretty well, you know, significantly bigger, much more aerated and sticky, we'll use these concrete walls on each side. One of the things I noticed about this one that I like is this one's sitting in here at 25 or 30 degrees to the dam. So that concrete wall gives us a recoil, boom, kicks our back of our boat out and bounces us 
that direction, not straight back across the face. Um, we talked yesterday about if I'm driving a motor rig into this dam to, to go in after a victim or for training, all right, what I want to do is I want to drive in so that my motor is toward that pump house, all right, or that structure. Two reasons. This is where all your support, this is where all your guys are going to be helping you out. They get, you know, this is all the assets that are coming to help you out. They're over here. If you get stuck in there, all the help is going to come from this side, right? The other thing, in, and it, we didn't talk about tethers yesterday, but we, we should probably make sure we do that really easily. Uh, even if the water's higher, you guys can set a couple ladders down across these gaps. The, motor, the boat can drive over to this corner, and you can drop a throw bag right to that, right to that boat. They're going to clip that on to cook a 500-foot bag or whatever together back out here, over here, and you can pull that boat out super easy with a team of three or four guys. All right? So <laughs> remember, the first guys that are coming, all right, you want to get here, you want to double check. PFDs, helmets, all the gear you need. You're in the boat. Seats are tight, all right? And your job is to get in there and get that victim and get them into the boat, all right? If you're able to drive that boat out of the dam, great. You drive it out of the dam, you get it over here, you hand that victim over as quickly as possible. You're done, all right? If not, if you're stuck in there and it's super aerated and whatever, all right, you've got a hold of the victim, provide whatever care you got, but you have more assets coming. All right, so like I said, great point right here off of this wall. Uh, you got to be careful. If you're moving around that, you're getting out there. But a 50 foot throw bag drops to these guys incredibly easy from right there at that point. All right, so uh, if you can, you're facing this way. We talked about this angled wall. If I can't just drive out of it in reverse or forward and it just keeps wanting to lock me in, all right, what I'm going to do is back off maybe to the middle of the dam, put it in forward, get as much bite as I can, build as much momentum as I can, and try to hit that wall at 10 or 15 miles an hour, wait for the recoil, throw it in reverse, cut the motor away from the dam, and try to get the motor across that boil line and pull the back of my boat out and just gun it. Um, it's hard to practice that because we just don't have the water today, right? But that's one of the neat things that I see about the dam. And like I said, the other thing is, even if you can't drive your motor rig out of that, you're gonna launch the boat down here, wherever you can launch it in, drive up to the dam, get your victim, and there are more assets coming. Um, you know, provide whatever care that you can. Once you have that victim in the boat, and if you can't drive the boat out, it's up to the other guys here to put a plan together. Where it's, whether it's extending the ladder out there and uh, dropping a rope or whether you know, whatever that plan comes up to. You guys will train through that in your exercises and uh, developing your protocol. Um, the other thing is we're, we're going to go in the dam today. We're going to come over the dam today. Um, you'll start to feel it'll have a significant little more splashy today, I think, than it did yesterday, but it's still not going to be. Uh, I mean, hope you should be able to come over the edge a little smoother. We were, we were catching on the edge yesterday. Um, the other thing that, that you keep in mind is that is you have sea anchors on the boat. Yeah. And they are super effective. Um, even if they don't get you out, they get a rope downstream out of the danger zone that someone else can get their hands on and get you out either by a boat or or even, you know, because it's so shallow right in here, you might get a... Yeah, so that's a good chance that you, I mean, if you drop 50 feet, put a sea anchor from this side of the dam, all right? There's a good chance that somebody on live bait tether could wade right in there and grab that rope. Um, chances are it's going to pull you out of the dam. Uh, Darren was talking about uh, Darren was talking about that boil line. All right, I talked about the finger. So the other part that you should know is you've got um, you've got a hole that is wallered out here underneath uh, that 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 hydraulic forms in. And then, just so you know, this is kind of called the spoil fence or the spoil spoil pile. And that's just all the boulders that have been chucked up and, and that kind of stuff. So as the water gets higher, when you throw that sea anchor, it kind of meanders around, but it's lightweight, jellyfish-like, you know? It kind of does its thing. And the currents, it doesn't want to come to the top immediately, and it'll find its way out. And then when the rope gets tight, 
that sea anchor opens and it starts to pull on uh, on the boat. And everybody kind of saw those this morning, right? Um, so what? The other thing that, uh, as you guys train and you work on this, we talked about a little bit yesterday, uh, your go, no-go guy, um, he is at the edge of the water, right? He's checking PFDs and seat belts. Uh, the other guys that are here and assets you've got coming are have throw bags. Everybody near the water has a PFD and a helmet on, right? Um, and then you guys develop those protocols based on, on your training and all that. Um, so the go no-go guy, and this spot right up here is your uh, incident or scene commander, however however that works. Um, but for today, what we're gonna be doing, and we're, we're gonna start this, is running uh, the oar rig over the face and the water's deepest on that side of the river. Um, so about 15 or 20 feet this side of the pump house is where the, the ride will be, will be occurring. Uh, Darren's going to take some people over that, and then uh, we'll see how that goes. But, do um, you have anything to add, um, Darren? You know, well, one thing you know, that for, for today is we may, we may want to get one of those motor rigs and pull a few of those logs off, off that thing to make it give us a bigger zone. And um, we can, you know, we can also, if we do that, we can push boats over let you guys get in there on the oars and not have to be proficient enough to get over that lift but just get up there and push over and then you guys can, you know, we can go through the time and just kind of just, you know, go, go so you get a chance to, to get your hands on it and figure stuff out for yourself, you know. Um, but other than that, I think we're, I think we're pretty good. Cool. Uh, so, you know, a uh, couple throw bags. Uh, when you guys are training or whatever, uh, eyes on uh, everything that's going on. Um, when you're coming over the dam, just so everybody hears me, all right, the guy in the front has got his handles, all right, he's down on his knees, lap belt across him. Don't be looking straight at the peak leg like, oh, is it that pretty orange, all right? You want to tuck your head up, get to the side, and because when you come over there, there's going to be a little jolt at the bottom, right? So you want to take that peak leg in that front into a shoulder. Either shoulder is fine, uh, but you don't want to be stoving up necks and all that kind of stuff. So as you come over the lip, just tuck up, you know, tighten a little bit, but still stay, stay a little flexible, and uh, make sure you're pulling those knees forward into that strap, and you don't have a lot of space to collapse into the front of that boat. All right? Helpful, especially the bigger guys. Momentum wagons. <laughs> Inertia is real, boys. <laughs> So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Anybody have any questions, any thoughts, comments? Okay. All right, let's do it.